They are the last images of a family together. The tragedy at Hillsborough. On the TV and radio, announcers told people to stay home if they didn't have a ticket because of how packed it was. Overpacked crowds. In the police control box, the man in charge of the match, Chief Superintendent David Duckenfield. Inexperienced so-called leaders in crowd control. Between 2.30 and 2.40, People started to cram up at the turnstiles in front of Lepping's Lane. The tragedy occurred as thousands of Liverpool fans massed outside Hillsborough's Lepping's Lane end. The antiquated turnstiles at the ground meant admission was slow. To speed up entry to the ground and alleviate the crush outside, police ordered Gate C open. Via News Direct, the visuals show what led to the disaster. With the gate open, around 2,000 people were able to get into the grounds. Instead of the steady trickle of fans entering the stadium through the seven turnstiles, a massive influx of people flooded the tunnel. Disturbing history shows the discrepancies between the stands. This resulted in hundreds of fans rushing into the already full pens 3 and 4, situated directly behind the goal. The influx of fans caused severe crushing in the two pens forcing fans to climb over the fences and up to the upper level to try and escape. Inside the ground, the central pens are filling up. Chief Superintendent Duckenfield gives the order and Gate C is opened. More than 2,000 fans enter, many head into the packed pens 3 and 4. The gate remains open for about five minutes. The failures of security and police that day would result in attending Liverpool fans suffering distress, losing consciousness via overcrowding, and being squished and trampled to death. Footage was shown to the jury of the girls on the terraces. They'd become separated from their dad after he'd gone to buy a program. Other images from minutes later are too distressing for us to broadcast. It would be called the Hillsborough disaster. One witness described football fan Vicky Hicks's last moments in court. Trevor and Jenny Hicks passed their thanks on to another witness, Paul Taylor. He described finding Vicky lying on the floor with her arms outstretched. He tried the kiss of life, but said he realized she was dead. So he covered her face with her cardigan because he didn't want to leave her the way she was. In all, 97 people would perish at Sheffield Wednesday's ground for the FA Cup semi-final against Nottingham Forest. The images of the aftermath via ITV are tough to bear. The sickening scenes here yesterday raised crucial questions about policing, crowd control, and indeed safety in soccer stadiums around the country. The response failed Liverpool fans that day. The Sun newspaper failed and continues to be admonished for what they printed following the disaster. Claims of pickpockets from Liverpool fans, claiming they urinated on brave cops, tons of fights, and in the end, blamed Liverpool fans for what happened. It is an image ingrained in the minds of every Reds fan. The front page of the Sun from that day. The editor, at the time was Kelvin McKenzie. He has pleaded ignorance and blamed the Yorkshire police. He would later apologize. He called LFC fans thugs and drunks. The owner of that paper, you may be thinking? This man, Rupert Murdoch. To this day, Liverpool supporters boycott the Sun newspaper. ITV's stunning documentary would show the lengths police went to cover up the disaster and wash their hands clean of playing a role, including changing 164 officers' account of the disaster. Politicians like Tony Blair, when posed with calls for a new public inquiry into Hillsborough, would remark, what is the point? At a memorial, LFC fans chant justice for the 96. 22 years after the disaster, an independent panel found an elaborate cover-up was orchestrated by senior police officers aimed at protecting the ranks and smearing the victims and survivors. It would later be reported the panel found as many as 58 lives could have been saved that day. David Duckenfield, who would admit to lying, would be charged, though later he was found not guilty. Which brings us to recent revelations regarding the disaster. Dominic Raab, a conservative who serves as Deputy Prime Minister under Rishi Sunak, 
came under fire for recent comments he made about the creation of an independent public advocate so survivors of a tragedy have support. His plan was immediately criticized by families and campaigners who said it fell crucially short of the public advocate they have long called for as part of proposed Hillsborough law reforms. So what is Hillsborough law? It would require public authorities such as the police, fire brigade, and local authorities to have a duty of candor in legal processes and provide bereaved families with funding for legal representation equal to that of those public authorities. This has been blocked over and over and over again, leaving families of victims to continually fight each and every day until it is passed. Labor MP Maria Eagle admits Rab's proposal disappoints the masses. She has presented the Hillsborough family's bill multiple times in Commons, 12 times in fact. Mr. Rob's IPA plans were also criticized for not being fully independent and accountable to the families. Shadow Justice Secretary Steve Reed said without being under the control of families, it won't save lives and prevent cover-ups. Secretary Reed would go on to say, I think the IPA is insulting to those who have campaigned for their loved ones and for the rest of us. Mr. Rob is not listening. And that's very disrespectful to people who have suffered incredible loss and have turned that grief into a campaign for justice for everybody. The government is not listening to victims or MPs. So who are they listening to? There's such a consensus among the families who have campaigned for decades on this point. It's hard to understand why Dominic Robb is holding out against the common sense proposals. It seems like he's refusing to listen to reason. He makes tragedies more likely to happen and many more cover-ups likely to happen. A system that fails to learn from its mistakes is doomed to repeat them. Rob continues to delay it because in his words, he is seeking feedback from Eagle and the victims' families. Louis Brooks, whose brother Andrew 26 was among those killed at Hillsborough, also said the proposal was not the advocate required. This appears to be another process of the government being seen to do something, but the reality is it's all a distraction from Hillsborough law. And it seems to be their way of ensuring there will never be a Hillsborough law, she said. Rob said he had offered to meet with the Hillsborough families and welcome their views. But Elkin Abrahamson, director of Hillsborough Law Now, said the government's engagement with the families had been, quote, almost non-existent. As always, justice for the 97.